under, under normal circumstances, um, on an occasion like this, seventh year celebration, we should be shouting hallelujah. But that is the body of the time has swallowed up any such possible celebration because we are still in transit as a people, as a church in the land. And if we do not have adequate insight for navigation, uh, the highway to our inheritance will become our burial ground. Hallelujah. This time is not for preaching. This is not, this season is not for preaching. This season it's a season of the call to prayer. And that's why we may not be shouting seven hallelujahs for those are good things, but not now. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Lord, help us. Help us. Help us. Help us in Jesus. Mighty name. Psalms 102. The way you clapped when they mentioned my name, I began to wonder because what is in my spirit is small. The clap is more than what I believe I received. <laughs> Maybe it will grow. But I tell you the truth, it's not a time for celebration. It's not a time to relax. It's a season of prayer. Psalms 102. Ah, my friend Zach, long time. God bless you. Hallelujah. 102, let's begin from verse 9. We'll We'll take it to 13. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink, my drink with weeping because of thine indignation, thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Verse 13 is my emphasis. Because the word that I have from the Lord looks like um, the Lord showed mercy and gave me access to spy upon a certain plan that has been hatched in the kingdom of darkness. And the purpose of this night's meeting is to destroy that plan before the break of day. Amen. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Now, you cannot pray this kind of prayer except you have an understanding of the time. This prayer is time motivated he got an insight into what the time was about and it was within the scope of that insight that a prayer point that was suiting for the season was fabricated in this particular case he knew that the time the prophetic time had come for God's mercy to be, for God's indignation to be overpassed. And so he prayed with accuracy because he had an understanding of the time. What I came with is a prayer point, it's not a message. And that's why I had to bring this scripture just to show us that when our hearts begin to perceive the timing, the seasons of the lands, in which God has domiciled us as ministers of the gospel and our hearts begin to perceive seasons, perceive timings, it's supposed to first of all precipitate in accurate prayers that will create platforms for God to find occasion to bring his plans to pass. 
we are in a strange season. And this was what the Lord showed me. Turn your Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 26. I think the scriptures there lend themselves so favorably to bring interpretation of the things that is on the heart of God. Oh, it's obvious I've, it's been long I came to Lagos. Okay, I salute Lagos, I salute Lagos. In Jesus' mighty name. Are you there in the book of Isaiah chapter 26? We'll begin from verse 15. The moment I finish my delivery and you understand what I believe I picked from the Lord, I will go and sit down. He said, thou has increased the nation. Oh, thou has increased the nation. Thou art glorified. Thou has removed it far unto the, all the ends of the earth. Lord, in trouble have that visited thee. It means when the guys were increased, the increase was so dramatic that the news and the noise that emanated from the increase reached, reached all the earth. But it was when they came into trouble that they visited God and poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Hallelujah. Next verse. He said, like a woman, then he gives us an illustration of our condition. Because a lot of people were motivated to join the intercessory ranks because of pressure, because of hardship, because of the rod of the Assyrian. Many people were motivated. You know, those days, <laughs> intercession was, the intercession room was always empty of functionaries and suddenly intercession is becoming popular because we have realized that if God doesn't come through for us we can't even see the future that we are headed for and so the Bible says it was in the time of affliction that they poured out prayer I'm talking about Nigeria not so much prayer has been poured out because of chastening. So much prayer has gone forth because of affliction. Now, this parable that God wants to give us in the next verse is to show us a few pictures that will inform us adequately such that when we pray prayers that are based on motivated by affliction and motivated by indignation we must understand that the devil has a certain plan which is what he wants to accomplish right now i began to get this intelligence not too long ago in my own capacity as an intercessor i've been chewing it before the lord but i believe this is not a prayer that i can pray through as an individual he said, like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery. Now, if the other day when my wife was pregnant, we went to see the doctor, he asked a few questions and gave us the expected date of delivery. The moment conception has taken place, timing has set in. We can predict. Are you there? We can predict when delivery should find expression. So is it like a woman with child that draweth nigh the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. Next verse. He said, we have been with child, we have been in pain, and we have, as it were, brought forth wind. 
The Lord gave me insight and showed me that Satan has regrouped his functionaries. And uh, there is a massive invitation of darkness that has been secured at the moment to ensure, you know, hope is building. When, when the expected time of delivery is coming, hope begins to build. Even though you can't sleep at night, the, 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 the hope that a man child will stand before you in a few days is quite an encouragement. And suddenly, we see the spirit of hope flooding the land. We see men begin to hope again because of several things that are beginning to happen. And in fact, it is God himself that is orchestrating the pathways of hope for us as a nation by reason of orchestrations that are taking place. I speak in parables. But what I saw is that the enemy had regrouped. And what the enemy wants to achieve is that our hope will be like unto bringing forth wind. And the Lord has summoned us to pray so that we can destroy this, this treachery. That's the first prayer point. Hallelujah. He wants our hope. Have you ever seen a woman pregnant and the tummy is so big she can't sleep at night? The spinal cord has, is almost fractured. And then she comes into the labor room for a time of delivery and what comes out is wind. <laughs> Satan sees the possibility that is ahead of us as a nation. And he, uh, he wants to play his final red card. And if the church, the body of Christ is not sensitive to, to fling into deliberate, terrible intercession to frustrate the devil. As a nation, you will see us. You will see wind will come out of this hope that is rising from the land. We thank God for the things that are taking place in the land. It's as if the soul of this nation is being unlocked. And several potentials that we never knew existed are beginning to show themselves. The young men and young women of Nigeria have never known that they are in possession of a mighty ability that can shake the mountains. They shake the mountains. All kinds of realizations are beginning to take place and it is consistent with the timing on God's agenda. It is not because something new started happening. It's because timing came and a dimension of grace was unleashed that is beginning to generate the outcomes that we are seeing and the possibility of our emancipation and salvation as a nation is becoming clear to us. There is something for us to hope on. Because the time has come. When the devil is enraged. That's so, oh, you people, you can hope. He wants to play all of his cards. He wants to play his last card. He wants to play his bad card. To the end that this hope will consume it in a, in a disappointment that will pierce the heart of the nation. And cause it to submit permanently under the weight of darkness. Tonight we are going to raise a cry. And if we strike the mark in the spirit, God will cause his hand to pass through this land. And meanwhile, we are just initiating the prayer today. Everyone will need to carry that prayer point to your closet. We will not bring forth for trouble anymore. Yeah. This pregnancy of hope that is rising in the land will produce that which our ancestors prophesied. Yeah. And thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. 
We are going to petition the Lord. We were patient in the wilderness because your sovereignty was at work. But now we perceive that this is the time to favor us. Do not deny us your mercy. Have mercy on Zion. Have mercy on Zion. Have mercy on Zion. Go back to my scripture. Let me show you how the devil intends to facilitate this agenda. For we have been with child. We have been in pain. So the travail has actually caught up with us. And there are several among us that have prayed in this season like you have never prayed since you got born again. I mean, do I have a witness? Yes, because it was a travail of hope that the Lord will soon bring to delivery the things that he has spoken, the things that he has set in motion. And Satan wants to take advantage of our hopes and cause us to be perpetually plunged into depression. He said we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. It means there's a seed of might. There's a seed of might that is locked up in the body of Christ in Nigeria. We have seen images of this seed of might manifest through our ancestors. The glory and grace that was factored in the ministry of Benson in the Hosa was, was a shadow of the seed of might that God has placed on the land. There's so much potential even if you have heard whispers from the camp of the enemy, you will have heard about the potential of the church in Nigeria. In fact, the way this nation has even survived has defied economics and a political science needs to open a branch to study the case study of Nigeria. It should be a course on its own. It's a seed of greatness that lies in our bosom. And Satan wants us to walk on crutches for life. Second prayer point, we are asking that God will unlock. You see, there are, there are some motions that if God should set, even if Satan is awake and aware, he no longer has the ability to interfere with those things that have been set in motion. There is a flood of young men carrying fire. And suddenly people are beginning to receive the intuition of the spirit again. Something is rising just like the sound of an abundance of rain that Elijah heard. Satan knows that if he waits for the time of delivery, he might be disappointed. His memory and worship might cease forever. And so he wants to strike for the last time. We were born to rob deliverance in the earth. But the, the sequence of things is that we will first rot deliverance in our land and, de and destroy the beast of reckless wickedness. Then our stature will be adequate for us to rot deliverance. Where? In the earth. What I'm saying is before we kill the beast of Africa, there's one around now. And Satan intends that our testimony will be that we have not wrought deliverance in the earth. Today the Lord will stir up the seed of greatness that is locked up in your spirit. This is the time for the strong. This is the time for the valiant. This is the time for those that have capacity in the Lord to see beyond the chaos. And to see into destiny. There's a seed of greatness. That was set in motion by the Lord. And Satan himself was not consulted. Before all of that was done. We make demands on this seed. We make demands on it. That it might rise. And it might speak. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
finally, it says, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Listen to me. You are not with me. I don't know how to coin this as a parable. There are several men that if they don't fall, huh? if they don't fall, will be entangled. I don't know how to say it better than that. They need to fall to create passage for that which God wants to do. If, if this our prayer is effective, the falling can start from this night. They are inhabitants, they are giants whose destiny in this season is that they must fall. Some giants must fall. The inhabitants of the land, they are such that have been appointed unto a great fall, a crash. You know, hallelujah, a crash. And everyone in any corner of the land will hear the impact of the crash. Listen to me, if you have not seen that crash that I'm speaking about, then don't rejoice. Rejoice only after you see the crash of them that have been appointed by the Lord to fall in this season. And we are going to facilitate it. Oh. Aika Seni Monte Gobali Asuka. We are going to facilitate that fall. There are inhabitants in the land that must fall. So that the seed of greatness can find the ventilation that is needed for it to begin to speak. There are waves of life that will speak over the land and heal the parts corners of the territory. Oh. Oh. And when these things happen, our pregnancy will not be in vain. <laughs> our hope will not be dashed. The utterances of our ancestors will see it come to pass in our lifetime. The cross of Jesus Christ will fall on the territory of the bond woman. And the people that you are afraid of today will become one with you on the field of harvest. I see a light coming. A brilliant light from above. It's coming into the darkness of the territory. Oh, this is our time. And that's why we must pray. David said, we understand that the same time is come. So arise. Have mercy on Zion. Have mercy on her inhabitants. Have mercy on her children. Arise, arise, and have mercy. Can you cry for mercy? For the race is not to the swift, and the battle is not to the strong. We have reached the edge of destiny as a nation. Arise. You spoke before and delivered the land from the hands of tyrants. You spoke before and brought salvation to them that were under oppression. Once again we cry. Speak again. Speak again. Speak again. I saw Kebalan to Menaya. And to Bezuke Takakumba. Brayeso Seli. Bakaneni Montela. Ufalesco Baneli. Have mercy on Zion. Do not forsake your covenant with our ancestors, intercessors and prophets that stood before you. 
all the days of their life. We bring into focus the travail of all the intercessors that have labored in the territory. And we say, have mercy on Zion. Seko bakala babayata. Presko vela kila maka kombele keke. Zanto pi. Aka mansala. Aka mansale to kambreskaya. Aya kopeta kwata balad. Brasa kabala kabar. We bring into focus. Labors that were wrought in righteousness to preserve your name in the territory. Have mercy on Zion. Yes, O Saminal. Brakatala Babonda. Yakaba Sante. Yakaba Bosakwat. Yakamanta la Babokola. Brahma Seka. Brahma Katekun. Brahma Soke Bantele. Brakamba Santalia. Brakamamamamama. Brakasayatua. Ekamante. Ekamakula. Eka Mansanda, Abranda Babola, Abra Baba Sakatala, Abre Katala Babon Seni. I can hear your voice. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. We will not deliver wind again. It will not be a hopeless initiative. It will end. In a new season, it will end in a new possibility. Yes, Kosali Baharatalia, Enta Mama Hanta La Babaya, Rakatala, Asamata La Baboria, Abre Masika Branta Babota, Eka Mesu, Eka Mamparat, Eka Masan, Eka Masan, Ela Masan, Ela Masan, Ela Masan. La 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 santa babola kaya, la la santa babola kaya, a la 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 basanta, e la basanta, a la basanta, a la basanta, la isabokela, la isabokela, i kame susale, a pres contela, a branta babota, i la barataria, a skempo latua, a branta yete, a kabose kapa ala, a branta basanta la, a branta babota. Abranda ba semina, abranda ba yaka da ba boria. I ale ba bo seketala, para kanta ba boria. E pra bisa kante, a para na setania. E kapalata abranda ba bo lakade, para siko, para matala, para masik, para makoria, para masan, para makanda, ba sikaba, para sonse, para kapalaya. Enta makante apresko perame amparata baboria asala ayakanda embrekete lakura abranda babosana embraka batala baboria amansa dekala abraka tala babonda. Yala babose kalia eka banda la babonda asi makate abaranta ye. Abaranta kusketa mina ayato se sasa ba abante kabalata kuwa pera se sote abreka tala baboria. We bring into focus the prayers of the saints and we say, Lord, have mercy on Zion. 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 La ise kabe la moko bande. A presko fila. A la mata la baboria. Esi kabrendo bokonde. A la tua seta. A parana babolatalia. Eska meta kantalia. A planta baboze malatalia. A lete te kabala malatabala. A planta batala baboria. Have mercy on Zion. Have mercy on Zion. Belo si kabrante kabuka manahaya. Abre konte te kembe. Asa matala. Ebra makanda. Ebra makona. Ebra masanda. Ebra nakanda babori. Esi matale. Esi matale.
Sima da Bracata, Ratababora Nasel, Aparata Branda Bacata Baboria, Pasia Bacata Prela Bucata Baboria, Enda Kasuke Baba. In the name of Jesus. This is the sign. They are giants that must fall. Do not rejoice before that sign. For when that sign comes, it is proof that the miscarriage has been stopped. Oh my God. Oh my Father. Can we cry to him? Let the giants fall. There are giants that must fall. There are giants that must fall. There are giants that must fall. Ela mosika brante kude mahalaita. Pusa se la brenta kande babona. Ya man se la boria. Ala barata brata babose katama. Ela masata babarata. Iskopre la banza kunda. Ala ita kande ya kanda balata kunda. Ala ita kande babosa nakamata. Ala ika sute brantelia. Ala ike santelia. Abranta babole masantelia. Ebria kapapa santa. Abrante suse sazaita. Abreka palatwa. Ezamina kande. Abria sito branta. Akabalaita kampela. Shamanta breka boda. Amanso sela. Amansa sala boda. Akande baboria. Akande baba santa. Ebra kantelia. Ebra kunda. Ebra mena sede. Ebra kante boboria. Abela musaka. Ika mama laita. Abeso sela. Lord God. Can you read our land of the giants? Read our territory of the giants. Read our nation of the giants. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your enemies be scattered. Arise. Arise. Holy one, let your name be praised. And let your name be praised. Sing in our eyes, our eyes, our eyes. Our eyes, our eyes, son of God. Let your enemies be scattered. And let your enemies be scattered. your name be praised. Let your name be praised. Sing in our eyes, our eyes. Our eyes, our eyes, Son of God. Let your enemies be scattered. Let your enemies be scattered. Oh.
ask that you plant this burden to pray on these two prayer points on the heart of everyone that is here present and those that are participating online and we will hold on to it until it pleases you to come and command deliverance unto Jacob by all means let the giants fall in Jesus mighty name Amen you may be seated in order for us to adequately understand the Bible there are some key words that we can build our vista around one of such words is covenant another word is kingdom because it is true that God is a king he's not a prime minister, he's not a president, he's not a chancellor and what he's doing in the entire scripture is that he's ruling the reason for our contention, our warfare, is so that his reign can be established in quarters that have been ceded out to the devil. And so when we say that kingdom come, for instance, it's a declaration of war. We are trying to set up his kingdom in the earth. So the word kingdom is quite vital to the understanding of the Bible. The word covenant is quite vital. Now, because of the sensitivity of the season, I would like to show us a few covenants that God established in the earth. Because we need to invoke one this night. There are five covenants in the Bible. And only one is old. So let's start from number one. It's number one that interests me. Genesis chapter 8. Beginning from verse. Are you there in Genesis 8? My intention is not to teach, it's just to build understanding that will enable us to carry the cords of intercession a little further in order for us to be able to gain penetration in the spirit. Genesis chapter 8, beginning from verse number 20. And Noah built it an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour and, and, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done 22 while the earth remained seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease Hallelujah. It will interest you to know that this was the first man in the entire Bible that prayed and God answered. He prayed and there was a feedback. There was a time, uh, I, I guess that is Genesis chapter 4, if I'm not mistaken, verse 25, when the Bible began to say that men began to call upon the name of the Lord, but were not told that God answered. But this man was able to set up an altar by revelation. And he was able to access God through his efforts. And he was able to compel God to give a response. Even though the response that God gave was in his heart. It was a response nonetheless. Now, this man was a survivor. He had seen the wrath of God come upon the face of the earth. And he was one of the few ones that survived that rock. As at the time that he was coming out of the ark, 
the topography of the, the earth experienced a wobble and the entire topography of the earth shifted so it was a new landscape that he was coming into because of the impact of that flood. And he knew that God that destroyed the earth before can destroy it again. And so in intercession, he wanted to broker a contract with God. So he set up an altar of intercession. And the Bible says that he took of every clean beast. I've explained that here before. Why he chose clean beasts. First of all, what do they call that bus? Toyota Hayas. It's a 14 seater bus. If it's fully loaded, normally they put excess luggage under the seat. So the bus is more full than the manufacturers ever expected. There's yam on them. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. If that car, God forbid, what if he had an accident and he tumbles three times? Maybe the man towards the window this side died. The one towards the window this side died. Somebody's skull in the middle broke. Somebody broke his leg. Somebody's even looking for his hand. This side had been cut off. And in that same arrangement, there are people that came out of the bus on hot. They were in the same bus. But the impact of the accident was minimal on them. Clean creatures were creatures that retained their manual. The way they were supposed to operate as ordained by God in spite of the fall. You, you, many of us don't know that the fall gener generated a mutation. A huge mutation. And it is because of this mutation that God... The spirit of God had to be withdrawn from the creation. The spirit of God, the patent, the mark of ownership of that creation was no longer, God didn't have the mark of ownership again, so he had to withdraw. So, but there were creatures that still maintained relatively their modus operandi. Mosquito that was supposed to be taking nectar from flowers, it takes blood now. That's, <laughs> that's how terrible the arrangement became. So this man took clean creatures and brought them for sacrifice. And what he was saying in his intercession is that I don't know why these creatures were not affected by the impact of the fall. But that covenant that you have with these creatures that kept them in alignment irrespective of the fracture that took place. Can you extend that covenant to creation so that we can predict the future? So that we will not be afraid of another sudden intervention of your indignation. Can you hold some parameters constant, some variables constant so that if we deal properly with the things you hold constant, we should have an expectation that nothing will take from us. That was his intercession. And uh, God liked his prayer point and said in his heart, all right, I will not again attempt to do this kind of destruction that I just did now. Uh, as long as the earth remains, in our held some variables constant, seed time and harvest will not cease. I give you that. It says summer and winter will not cease. It says day and night. So those are the constants. So if you know how to deal properly with this arrangement, you should be able to have an outcome that is predictable in irrespective of the fact that the structure that is in place is a structure that has manipulated, turned the tables around. You can expect an outcome if you know how to deal with these variables. Now go to chapter 9. Are you there in chapter 9? In chapter 9, God now establishes what we call the covenant of Noah. And that was the first covenant God established in the entire Bible. And just like I told you that we have five covenants in scripture and only one is old. It's only the covenant of Moses that is old. All the other covenants are still in force. This is that day where we need to invoke 
the covenant of Moses afresh concerning Nigeria. And that's the reason for the Bible study. The Bible study is, is just educative so that we can be competent to carry out our agenda at the moment. All right? I'm not teaching. It's, this is education. Intercessory education. Verse 13 of chapter 9 says... I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. So the covenant was between God, Noah, and every living creature of all flesh. It means that that covenant is still available between us and God. Are you there? And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Verse 16, And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. First of all, I will need to break this thing into categories so that we can follow me very, very well, we will need to check these covenants under the following headings. First heading is the parties that the covenant was made with. The parties. Secondly, we will need to also check the purpose of the covenant. So we we'll see the parties. We will see the purpose or the promise of the covenant. We will see the condition for the covenant. We will see the penalty upon the failure to keep the terms of the covenant. We will see the period for which the covenant has validity. And we will see the purpose. So parties, promise, conditions, penalties upon failure, period or validity then purpose of the covenant. Can we look at that? All right, so the promise. What is the promise? Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 is a promise of survivor. All right? It's a promise of the fact that um, the, the earth, the earth is until God's, uh, I don't want to take us to the book of Genesis chapter 6 and begin to talk about the rentage we have we are paying rent here yeah. and as long as our rent has not yet expired god will not intervene in world affairs 100 percent so we are part of the politics that will make things happen upon the face of the earth as long as that rentage has not yet expired the rentage of which i speak is the utterance that the lord made in the book of genesis chapter 6 concerning the time of man on the earth. He said, my spirit will no longer strive with man seeing that his flesh and his years, the word years used there is jubilee, shall be 120 jubilees. And if you do your calculation, 120 times 50 is 6,000. So the rentage, our tenancy of the earth is for 6,000 years. After 6,000 years, God has the right to intervene without consulting you. And those are the interventions that will take place during the end time. Are you still with me? Now, no need for us to go into that. But until that time when our rentage, our tenancy has not yet expired, we have a right to survival by reason of the covenant of Noah. Are you with me? It is open opposed to God's plan for an, a, for an intention of ethnic and territorial cleansing to take place. 
is opposed to God's plan because by covenant he has assured creation. He has assured every living creature that as long as the tenancy is still running, I commit to your preservation. No one should be afraid of any form of judgment because the bow is the token that is in the sky to remind me of the covenant that I have with you and with every living creature. And so we need to invoke that covenant as a, at a time like this. There is a covenant. You know, you, you know God, the God of covenant. You know that God does not break covenant. So we need to remind him of this one concerning Nigeria. My elder brother was going for his father-in-law's burial. He was sick. The doctors advised against traveling. But he was very close to this man. Even when I went to visit him, upon his recovery, he was still recovering. He was speaking about the man that his friend has died. And he did not unveil to anybody that he was going to make that trip. He took my younger sister with him. And as they were going, went for the burial to come back, they were kidnapped. This man was on drugs and he was not kidnapped with his drugs. That was how life drained out of him. Even though we paid the ransom that they requested for, it was his corpse we went to recover in the wilderness, in the heart of the forest. That cannot be normal. Is that normal? And you know, it's, it's, it's been long. Huh? I'm saying it now, not out of pain. I didn't say anything. Did I tell you anything like this? I'm just giving you an example because I'm teaching. That cannot be normal. Some of you can't travel to your village because you are not sure. I wanted my brother-in-law to come to us in Benway State and just rest my younger sister's husband. He said, the, the aeroplane services that we heard of in that your place. <laughs> Has it been restored? <laughs> Everyone lives in fear of his life. Meanwhile, there is a covenant that God gave by an act of his own integrity that he, he, he guarantees survivor. Any, we don't know how God wants to achieve it, but we want to present that covenant to him afresh. We have an entitlement in this agreement that you made. We are not there when you made it with Noah. But you made it with every living creature. Thereby making it binding upon us. It is with us now you have that agreement. I'm trying to open something so that we can pray. All right. If you are still with me, say amen. If we go back to the scripture, you will see the, the validity of this arrangement. The validity of this covenant is in verse 16 of Genesis chapter 9. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. He called it an everlasting covenant. So it means that there is a covenant that guarantees our survival. Not just as individuals, but as a nation. If intercessors in the land, if intercessors in the territory don't rise up, many things will happen that God did not plan. Because Israel was an act of God. But Israel divided. It was a nation that God crafted by his hand. He told their ancestor Abraham to go to his nation and expunge his name from the immigration register. Making him countryless. Expunge his name from his clan. Making him familyless. To expunge his name from his father's children. Making him fatherless. Because God had an intention to, to be, for Abraham to be named by him. For Abraham to be the father of the nation that he has orchestrated. Do you realize that when God was talking about nationhood, he did not come to a community. 
to consult with a clan. He came to a man. Hallelujah. And with this man, he founded a nation. It was an, a sovereign act of God. His laws began to prosper among them. But that same nation that was an act of God suffered a setback that was not intended. The first setback the nation suffered was that the, the design or the philosophy behind the nation was that it was supposed to be a nation of priests. Just like uh, India is a nation of philosophy. Uh, Germany is a nation of engineering. The United Kingdom is a nation of education. Nigeria is a nation of what? <laughs> Just hold your answer. <laughs> hold your answer. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> because anything you say, anything you say will be wrong now until, until some, the appointed time. So Israel was supposed to be a nation of priests. Where each and every one of them was in active service to the Lord their God. After the incidents of the golden calf, the margin of the possibility of the actualization of that vision was reduced. And only Levi achieved the, the idea that God had. Are you with me? It is possible that God might have lofty dreams for us. But if there are no intercessions, intercessors on ground, a compromise might be made. In fact, the possibilities of which we read now were occasioned by an act of intercession. The quota, that commitment that we are reading about in the book of Genesis was occasioned by a man's deliberate activity of priesthood. So it means that if we do not rise up as priests in this nation at this time, because the call right now to the body of Christ in Nigeria is to the priests. We are the ones that have the capacity to do this level of politics at this level, at this layer. So that things that people never thought was possible can actually become possible because of our interactions with heaven. And we have a ground to stand to cry about Nigeria. And that ground is a covenant that God enacted with Noah. And he said it is an everlasting covenant. So when I leave my house, I know I will come back. The reason why I know is because I know what I'm teaching you now. And I've taken it before God that it will, it will be a taboo for me to be kidnapped. After, after presenting this to you, Coven oh, covenant keeper. I was not the one that came to inspire you, to, but he's already available. It is on the strength of this that I am not afraid to go out to accomplish your errand. I'm going in your name and I'm standing on your counsel, your word. So this is my secret for going out and coming in. And it doesn't matter whether bombs are shot where he sends us. We will come back. And we are going to emboss and superimpose this reality upon our nation. Nigeria is fragile. Can we give it life? Can we take it away from life support and connect it to covenant and say, leave Nigeria? Hallelujah. So let me take you to the book of Revelation. Meanwhile, why is it that God is committed to preserving creation? Preserving you and me? Because God has a concept of family. The general assembly includes, is inclusive of the members of our family that are in heaven and the members of our family that are on earth. It has been God's plan from time immemorial for him to have two homes. One in the heavens and one on earth. That's how God designed it. I don't know why, but that's the idea. And if you check the original creation that was done in the book of Genesis, 
These two realms, heaven and earth, were designed to be self-sustaining, self-propagating, self-rejuvenating, and self-supporting. The first time rain fell, which is waters from the heaven coming into the earth, it was an act of judgment. Okay, let me, let me stop, let me stop. And so by the time we go to the book of Hebrews, you will see that the Bible says that we are come unto the general assembly. The family of God named in heaven and named upon the face of the earth. So the reason why God will have to preserve the family, preserve us is because we are part of his family on earth and that is the design. No kind of catastrophe can be allowed. He's a regulator. So no kind of catastrophe will be allowed to suck on the earth because as long as our tenancy is still valid, God is committed to having a family where? Not just on earth in Nigeria. There's a family. There's a family here. So in view of the above, we are going to pray. Today is for intercession. Tomorrow we can pray for the sick and prophesy. But there's a burden. I'm hoping that we'll be able to prosecute it. In the name of Jesus Christ. The thing about prayer is that you can only be sure that you are, you are praying. You cannot be sure that your neighbor is praying. You can't be sure that the other pastor is praying. But you can be sure of, be sure of yourself this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. So this is the arrangement. And you will see that God goes to great lengths. As we can see in the book of Revelation chapter 10. God can go to great lengths to keep the covenant of Noah. Are you there? In Revelation chapter 10. All right, let me just do a quick reading and... Uh, 10 verse 1, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head. You still remember that rainbow? It's still the covenant of Noah that is behind this whole administration. And his face was as where the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. That is his jurisdiction. He had a little book in his hands and cried with a loud voice when a lion roared and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Next verse. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up the words of those things which the seven thunders have uttered and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever who created heaven and the things that are therein, and the earth, and the things that are therein, and the sea, and the things that are, which are therein, and uh, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, and he had declared to his servants, as he has declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall be it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. 
Next verse. And I took the little book from out of his hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. This was an impartation. This was not, but it was bitter in his mouth, but bitter in his belly, sweet in his mouth. The angel was operating under the arrangement of the rainbow. And the arrangement of the rainbow is the covenant of Noah. And the jurisdiction of the angel's influence was from the sea to the land. So there are angelic infrastructure that God makes available just to ensure that that covenant of preservation that he has put in place is effective. You see, remember this scripture that Satan quoted on, during the temptation? And he shall give his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy feet against any stone. That arrangement is a function of the covenant of Noah. And there are nations that experience coverage as I'm speaking now. And even though Satan may want to bring vengeance and injury to them, because of the intercession that is rising from the land, there are angelic protectors that have been put in place and there are limits to which Satan can go. Nigeria is a sheep nation. Our ancestors that prophesied, we see through the lens of their prophecy and we understand that we have a destiny in God. It's not only Israel that was called. The time has come. Our destiny is under contention. Our destiny as a people, our destiny as the church. Everybody is afraid. Can we invoke the covenant of the Lord? We are not without covenant. We are not without transaction with God. We are not existing on our own. There is a word. He has spoken over our nation. And heaven and earth can pass away. But that which God has spoken cannot pass away. The first dimension of the activity of the saviors in the land is a dimension of reclaiming the land through intercession. It will strengthen the infrastructure that God has made available and there the are contentions that will take place overhead. The outcome of that contention will lead to the falling of giants. You see, I don't know how to help you understand this matter. Do you realize that the, the battle between David and Goliath, let's really analyze it. Goliath was a fighter from the days of his youth. And the potency of his weapon, namely his sword, was captured in scripture. But when he came against David, as small as he was, he did not come against David by the power of his arm or the capacity of his sword. He cursed David in the name of his God. You see, he took the battle to the realm of the supernatural. And when David came, his master tried to fit him with armor, the armor of warriors. And he was looking funny inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. He also said, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whose armies you have defiled. So the real battle that took place took place in the realm of the supernatural. And he took the foolishness of catapult to settle it in the natural. <laughs> what I'm calling us to do here is to take advantage of the structure that exists overhead. Nigeria is a sheep nation. It will not be an underdog. It will not be, be a slave that is pressured to surrender. The yoke of the plan of God dwells in the land. And out of that yoke, the golden hen of, of prophetic reality will hash. And from the way I perceive it, is, it will happen in, the, in our lifetime. So God doesn't need to allow us to be wiped out so that he can raise prophets from among our children. There's a structure that already exists. 
If only we can move this thing to the realm of the supernatural, you will. The moment, the moment the battle is accomplished in that realm, Goliath, he will fall. And I came to tell you today: do not rejoice until you see the sign of the fallen giant. Our battle ends upon the sight and the things that I say are eminent but we need to push it through prayer and so we call this general assembly to the place of prayer our destiny is at stake and we call the name of our God that has never lost any battle liberty salvation comes salvation comes but we need to move it into the supernatural there are already angels that are positioned Mighty, terrible entities have been positioned. But they will lack the strength to go on rampage until we provide support and we begin to declare the counsel of God. There is a covenant that guarantees the safety of every man. There's a covenant that guarantees the safety of every creature for that matter. We want to invoke that covenant. Remember what you said to Noah, remember the covenant of the bow in the sky. Remember and preserve Nigeria and save Nigeria and heal the land. Can we cry to him right now? Remember. Remember. Everyone is afraid. We don't know who will be kidnapped next. We'll be taken next. But today we want to call upon the name of our God. There's an infrastructure he put in place. To ensure that we don't go down as a nation. We call on that infrastructure. We call on that system. That his hand might go to work. Isamo Korea Babaratesi. Mosi Kabrante Kupala Matalia. I come on my siko break or talika santoria that you will do a walk in our days that the ears of men that will hear it will tingle. Oh God, that you might awake, that your jealousy might be aroused concerning your purpose, concerning your plan that you have for the nation Nigeria. We call upon your name tonight. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. Saiko velimo sita branta baboria. Misko fela anteli. Shama kante baboria. Braskatema. Ashama taba babona. Alata branda basekati. Iabo sika brendo konda mama santo. Ialalo la baba basika. Presko falante. Ika baba sosa sasa. Isko sesali makanda. Ebra makanda baboria. Arate susa. Arate manteli. Arate makoba la atwa. Abresko falante baba la kayata. That his hand might be stretched forth over the land. Over the land. From the north to the south to the east to the west. Stretch put your hand and preserve the land. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, covenant keeping God. Yeah.
upon Zion for the time to favor her the set time is come so felami sika bresko vele the set time is come set time is come in the name of Jesus Christ I believe hallelujah I believe that our prayers have ascended into heaven and if, if that is true he will give us a sign now the only sign I saw when I prayed was the sign of a trumpet And if what I saw is true, because it may not be, it may, it may be my mind, as I want Nigeria to be delivered, so I'm seeing things in my mind. If what I saw is true, 
Can you just keep quiet? Just keep quiet. Okay? If what I saw is true, the Lord will, in the, in the next few seconds as we pray, he will move in our midst. And he will put, his hand will be locked on someone that will begin to prophesy. I saw the sign of a trumpet. Someone will prophesy here. Okay, it's even coming stronger. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will prophesy. It's even coming stronger. Now, we might need to get the feedback. We might need to get the feedback. So, I don't know how we're going to do it. Do you have a mic? that must be removed. The hand of God is still on three people. It's on three people. That's what I see. And it's coming stronger. is saying that the season of judgment has come and like I spoke in parables there is a giant that will fall the hand of the Lord is still strong in the congregation the sign of the trumpet The sign of the trumpet is he yet stronger. We can't hear. seal of judgment is open and we will see wonders in our days I still feel that that weight of the Lord's hand is still in the congregation father can you rekindle your hand can you rekindle the hand 
Can you rekindle the hand? Can you rekindle it? Can you rekindle it? has heard our cry and he will not change his mind the judgment will begin from his house. That means we need to repent. We need to repent on behalf of Zion. We need to repent on behalf of Zion. Let the casualties not be in Zion. The river is still flowing. 